More than 100 journalists died in 2016 for simply doing their jobs. The circumstances are sometimes shady. In fact, in some cases, the victims' own governments have been implicated. And this is the story of one of them. In July 2016, broadcaster Pavel Sheremet was killed when his car suddenly exploded in Kiev, Ukraine. Authorities have done little to solve the crime, and if it ever is, it will be because of the dogged work of his colleagues. Here's the CBC's Terence McKenna with what those journalists uncovered when they began investigating killing Pavel. On July 20th, 2016, Pavel Sheremet left his Kiev apartment building at 7.40 a.m., as he did almost every day. He climbed into his red Subaru. He was making his way to the radio station where he hosted a popular political radio show. Four minutes later, as you can see from this security camera video, he pulled into an intersection a block from his house and his car exploded. Pavel was killed. Firemen rushed to the scene to extinguish the flames. The event shocked the nation. A well-known journalist in Ukraine has been killed by a car bomb in the Pavel Sheremet had just got into the vehicle and started Ukrainian his President work. Petro Poroshenko vowed to track down Pavel's killers and bring them to justice. National Police Chief Katya Dekanoidze was assigned to lead the investigation. So the Ukrainian authorities said it was a matter of honor to solve the murder of journalist Pavel Sheremet at this Kiev intersection in July 2016. If that is so, the performance of the police and government officials on this file has been somewhat less than honorable. After a lackluster one-year investigation, they still have no idea who wanted him dead or why. Because of Pavel's work, however, there are colleagues determined to find out what happened. Pavel Sheremet was born in the Soviet Union in what is now Belarus. In the 1990s, he rose to fame as a journalist and dissident, leading him to being beaten and jailed by authorities. He was a star on Russian television, but was driven out by the Putin regime. He became a well-known host in Ukrainian morning radio and developed a school that taught and mentored young journalists. Because many political murders go unsolved in Ukraine, Pavel's journalist friends had no faith that the police would get to the bottom of the crime. For example, this camera is going to this office. They set out on their own investigation, led by Anna Babinets and Dmitro Ganap. They felt a sense of obligation to Pavel Sheremet and a duty to stand up to his killers. So for people like Dima, like me, like a lot of journalists in Ukraine who worked as investigator, investigators, it's like a message, just stop doing your work. Not Ukrainian authorities, no Ukrainian police uh, or law enforcers or secret services cannot protect us. We reporters, we can count uh, just on ourselves. When we started our own in investigation, uh, it's, um, for us now, it's a way of uh, protecting ourselves. So if the murderers are trying to send you a message, you're trying to send a message back? That we are, uh, we are not afraid, we are not afraid. The journalist went around Pavel's neighborhood gathering the video from CCTV security cameras. Можна у вас взяти відео з цих камер спостереження, ми просто розслідуємо загибель нашого колеги Павла Шеремета. And began to track down witnesses. Mm -hmm. 
They seem to make far more progress than the police. Early in their search, they found these blurry infrared images of two shadowy figures moving through Pavel's neighborhood on the night before the crime. One is a woman, the other a man. The man takes up a position to keep watch on one side of the street, while the woman seems to kneel down beside Pavel's car, likely placing a magnetic bomb directly below the driver's seat. The two later leave the neighborhood together. While police released some of these grainy images in which the couple is unrecognizable, the journalists were able to track the suspects on other cameras for a full kilometer to a spot where they passed a much better quality camera. In this color image, you can see that the man is wearing a black hoodie with a distinctive logo on the back. From the actual security camera video on the morning of the murder, just as Pavel drives by, a man in a similar hoodie is seen crossing the street just behind his car. On that morning, there is a mysterious woman who takes up a position halfway between Pavel's home and the nearby intersection. At 7.45 a.m., shortly after Pavel's car drives by and explodes, the woman is seen rushing away from the scene of the crime. The journalists suspect it was she who triggered the remote control bomb. search for other significant video from the night before the murder, the journalists focused on a gray Škoda sedan that was parked up the street from Pavel's home. The car stays there for hours, with various men coming and going from it. Once again, the video quality is poor, so the license plate was illegible. For assistance, Pavel's friends reached out to an international journalism collective called Bellingcat. A member of the team in Germany named Timmy led the video analysis. He invited journalists to his home to examine the results. For me, the problem was to calculate out the noise. Before processing the raw video, only a few digits were legible. OK, we can see AA. Mm -hmm. yeah. and M and O. What you now see is the uh, noise of uh, the camera sensor. And from many frames, we can calculate this out. Mm -hmm. I create uh, single frames from video with uh, only the part with the car. He said he took 500 individual frames and stacked them on top of each other. Within each of those frames, he calculated minimum and maximum values of brightness and contrast. How many hours did you spend on this? Hours? For 500 frames, I think days. <laughs> How many days? <laughs> Two weeks. Two weeks. Wow. Okay, uh, for the result, we uh, take the pictures, uh, the frames from video, and we cut it and we put it in stack and the result for uh, this process was this picture. We can clearly read AA2551M and O. Back in Kiev, journalists used a source with access to a Ukrainian automobile database to identify the owner of the Skoda. It traced back to a woman named Natalia Zaretska. The journalist contacted Natalia Zaretska. Hello, Natalia. Yeah. At first, she denied ownership of the car. Yeah. 
Then they went to her house with a hidden camera. Finally, confronted with the documents, she admitted to signing the registration to hide the identity of the real owner. She eventually provided contacts for the car's true owner, a man named Igor, who agreed to meet with the journalist. Igor even brought along the Skoda. They showed him the video. Igor claimed he was there that night as a private investigator providing security for someone's children. He wouldn't identify the client. He claimed he knew nothing about the murder. I was pretty angry after our meeting with him because I felt as journalists like he got more information than we got. He got almost everything we have and we just got some stupid jokes. We knew that he's not so stupid, like he, um, he tried to pretend. The journalist began to suspect that Igor might actually have been working for the Ukrainian government's security service. They contacted a confidential source with inside knowledge. And sure enough, they were given information that Igor did once work for the spy agency. Igor, full named Igor Andreyevich Ustimenko, was born in Kremenchuk, Ukraine. He possesses a passport from Crimea, the region unilaterally annexed by Russia. He studied at an anti-rocket command school and has a listed address in Odessa, Ukraine. Documents showed he was working for the security service until at least 2014. After months of trying, journalist Anna Babinets was finally able to get Igor on the phone one last time. Hello. Hello, Mr. Igor? Yes. Good morning. This is Anna, a journalist. We saw you a few months ago. Do you want to meet me at the beginning? Yes, I want to ask you, when you were working in the Security Service of Ukraine? Yes, I want to ask you, when you were working in the Security Service of Ukraine? It was about our colleague, it was about murder, about serious things, and he just, uh, uh, he joked, and because of it, after we finished, I was uh, angry that uh, we couldn't uh, made him to answer frankly. The information about Igor was passed on to the police investigating the case, but they quickly cleared him. Pressed for details, the police told the journalists that they had asked Igor if he was involved in the murder, and he assured them he was not. When we come back, why would someone want to kill Pavel Sheremet? Why would someone want to kill journalist Pavel Sheremet? In addition to his radio and TV work, he wrote for Ukraine's leading investigative news outlet, Ukrainska Pravda, that is strongly critical of governments. The site is owned by his widow, Olena Pritula. Sevgil Musayeva Borovic is the editor-in-chief. Today in the Ukrainska Pravda offices, they are frustrated by the lack of progress in the official police investigation. Now, 
того, чому так входить, чому вони ну, намагаються це замовчати. In the view of the journalists, this case began to resemble a horrible incident from the past at Ukrainska Pravda. Another prominent broadcaster named Georgi Gongadze was the co-founder of that news site. Gongadze was murdered in the year 2000. Відрізання голови від тіла. Я просто дійсно обіцяю, бо вже дав відповідні доручення. The investigation showed that the Ukrainian government was involved. Recordings believed to be of the former president Leonid Kuchma capture him ordering Gongadze to be kidnapped or worse. On the same tapes, the former interior minister was heard confirming that Gongadze was under surveillance. Three policemen and an interior ministry official were eventually convicted for the killing, but no one has been brought to justice for ordering Gongadze's murder. Is history repeating itself? During many years, Ukrainian police officers or have been linked with murders, tortures, kidnappings, also against Ukrainian reporters. This is a absolutely general practice of our life. So, <clears throat> so you personally kind of didn't trust the police? We cannot exclude it. We cannot exclude that police could be linked with this murder, with execution of this murder. Again, there is evidence that the journalists of Ukrainska Pravda were under surveillance before the crime was committed. Documents were mailed to them anonymously. Власне, стало зрозуміло, що хтось слідкує за роботою Української правди і слідкує достатньо уважно, оскільки Вони були навіть і про ті теми, які ми так і не встигли зробити. Але здебільшого це було повідомлення у Фейсбуці, це були телефонні розмови, власне, які робилися з номеру, і це також були повідомлення у Вайбер. Who was conducting this surveillance? Моя власна думка, що це робила служба безпеки України і джерела мої, які працюють навколо адміністрації президента, а також про охоронних органах, кажуть, що власне це є аналітичні записки, які готує служба безпеки України. On February 8th, seven months after Pavel's murder, the Minister of Interior held a press conference. He announced that the government believed Pavel was murdered because of his work. The minister denied that anyone at Ukrainska Pravda had been under government surveillance. We received from the Ukrainian Ministry of Security a report that there was no such investigation. There was no such investigation. Police surveillance of journalists is a regular occurrence in Ukraine. Ukrainian politicians and uh, law enforcement officers every time deny every suspicious things. This is a common practice. But every time they will lie about this, they will deny it. I'm sure your friends ask you, who do you think did this? Why was this done? Why was he killed? Uh, Pavel's murdering, uh, that was not random shooting or random stabbing uh, on the street. That was very well organized, very well planned and very well executed. People who never did it, um, I don't think that they can do that. Maybe it's people from uh, security service of Belarus, of Russia, of, of Ukraine. I think that it was prepared by, by people who worked or still work for security service. But what country? It's the main question.
Three days after the bombing, Pavel Sheremet was laid to rest in his home country of Belarus. The police in Ukraine seem no closer to finding his murderers than they were at that time. At the Kiev intersection where he was killed, there is still a small private memorial that is carefully maintained. Ну, Павло був так вплетений у життя редакції, що іноді відчувається на це пусте місце, яке заповнював його сміх або його якісь жарти, або його надзвичайна міміка. І власне цей простір ну, відчуваєш таку пустоту, але ніхто не може заповнити. That documentary was produced by the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project and Ukrainian Public Television.